Analytical Chemistry 1, Lesson 20. Even though I have indicated that most of your equilibrium work in this course will make the assumption that the activity coefficients are always 1, it is worth taking a few minutes to be introduced to how 1 works more explicitly with activity coefficients. Some of the major sources of interactions that lead to the non-ideal behavior implied by an activity coefficient different from 1 is with the ionic species. Imagine a solution of calcium 2 plus ions and carbonate 2 minus ions. They like to combine and precipitate out of solution as calcium carbonate or chalk. But what if the solution contained a large amount of sodium chloride as well? Now the sodium ions would surround the carbonate ions, while the chloride ions would surround the calcium ions. Now it would be more difficult for the calcium and carbonate to get together. Their chemical reactivity would change because of the ion atmospheres created by the additional ions in the solution. The ions organize themselves this way because of the Coulombic attraction between oppositely charged species. The more ions that are present, the larger will be the ion atmosphere that has to be penetrated by the calcium and carbonate ions in order to react with each other. The total concentration of ions in a solution dictates its ionic strength. Now, ionic strength is quantified by this expression. It depends linearly on the concentration of an ion and quadratically upon its charge. We sum over all ions in the solution to find the solution's ionic strength. For instance, a 0.1 molar solution of sodium chloride has an ionic strength of 0.1 molar, exactly the same as its concentration. Another example is magnesium chloride. The magnesium cation has a charge of plus 2 because there are two chloride items, but because there are two chloride ions per molecule, the concentration of chloride will be 0.2 molar. Together, they give an ionic strength of 0.6 molar. A final example we'll, we will use is magnesium sulfate. This time both ions have the same concentration of 0.1 molar, but both are doubly charged and the ionic strength is 0.8 molar. This works because the ions I've chosen are all completely soluble in water. Many ionic materials were proved to be only slightly soluble. We will see more of them when we speak of precipitation reactions. The ionic strength of a solution of ions is used to find the activity coefficient for an ion. There are several theories that have been developed to make this calculation. The first very successful one is called the extended de Bayhuckel theory. This theory ultimately provides this equation to calculate the activity coefficient for a particular ion. It is believed to be, to be reasonably accurate up to 0.1 molar. Other more sophisticated theories have extended the range to as much as 3 molar. We will focus on de Bayhuckel. The numbers in the equation arise from a rather extensive collection of universal constants. We won't derive this in our class, but if you are interested, look it up in Wikipedia just to see how it arises. The variables are Z, which is again the charge of the ion, and mu is the ionic strength of the solution, like we just calculated. The parameter alpha is the effective hydrated radius of the ion. When an ion is in an aqueous solution, the polar water molecules organize themselves in a hydrated sphere around it, the negatively charged oxygen end pointed toward inwards for positively charged ions, and the positively charged hydrogen ends pointed inwards for negative ions. Your text has a nice table for many ions, along with some calculations of activity coefficients for solutions of different ionic strength. The ion radii, ion radii range from as small as 250 picometers up to 110 picometers. Activity coefficients range from 0.967 for H plus ions in a 0.001 molar ion strength solution down to 0.021 molar for the ferrocyanide at the uh, 0.1 molar ionic strength. As you can see, for some cases, our approximation that the activity coefficient is 1 will be a good one, while in other cases it can be very poor. Molecules that are not ionic do not produce the same ionic atmosphere, but they still have interactions that affect their chemical behavior. This theory does not address them at all, but such properties can be measured experimentally. The effects are generally smaller than for ionic species, so our assumption that gamma equals 1 is better for that kind of molecule. 